Matthew Cohen, Professor of International Theatre in the Department of Drama and Theatre. Professor Cohen is a leading scholar of Southeast Asian and transnational performance, um, and as we'll see tonight, is also a veteran puppeteer. Professor Cohen has published widely in his field. His books in include the comedy uh, Stan Hall, Popular Theatre in Colonial Indonesia, 18, uh, yeah, 1891 to 1903, which won the prestigious Bender Prize for the Association for Asian Studies. Another volume is Performing Otherness, Java and Bali on the International Stages, and Inventing the Performing Arts, Modernity and Tradition in Colonial Indonesia, which will appear next year, published by the University of Hawaii Press. He's chair of the Association of Southeast Asian Studies in the UK and represents the UK as a board member of the European Association for Southeast Asian Studies and a councillor of UNIMA, the International Puppetry Association affiliated with UNESCO. He's been a visiting research professor at the University of Connecticut in the US, a research fellow at the Netherlands Institute for Advanced Study in the Humanities and Social Sciences, a visiting professor at the University of Malaya, and a visiting scholar at Sonata Derma University in Indonesia. And his PhD students here have come from Taiwan, the US, the UK, Thailand, Germany, Greece, India, and Syria. As a Dai Lama puppeteer, he's performed internationally as a solo artist and with gamelan groups in Southeast Asia, Europe, North America. In Indonesia, he's performed ritual shadow puppet dramas to exercise villages and bless rice crops. I'm not quite sure what tonight's going to be in Asia. And also secular performances for Indonesia's uh, National Wayang Festival museums and galleries. Among his many performances in the UK was the all-night um, Lokanata, um, the Gamelan of the Gods, which was accompanied by more than 150 musicians from 20 gamelan groups across the country. In 2009, he was awarded with a world title from the court of Kerchib in Bona in Indonesia for his services to puppetry and local heritage. Um, after Matthew has given his performance in the inaugural lecture, um, we'll, we're very welcome, welcoming tonight Charles Humphrey, who's the former British ambassador to, to Indonesia who will give a vote of thanks. And after that, there will be a reception outside, which I hope you'll join us there. And there are some questionnaires which are asking you about why you've come tonight, and uh, we'll be gathering some information from that. So if you have a chance, please do feel free to. Thank you very much. changing on, on, on stage called um, A Dalang in Search of Waya, um, where I kind of investigated why I was doing what I was doing and how I was doing it as well. There was a lot of explanation about the kinds of things which I do, where I was coming from, 
problem of doing a traditional performance without a traditional audience became very important in that show. Um, and I, I transformed a few times in that show. I was moving between different states. Um, but we're not going to be doing that show tonight. So this is a different kind of show. Um, I should say this is the premiere, probably the one-off uh, version of this show. There isn't going to be another inaugural. I, was, I don't anticipate doing another inaugural in the near future. <laughs> I should leave all the, our guests from the university here, Katie, among others. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, but uh, um, um, this is a, a type, and that's a, that's a case of a lot of uh, traditional performances, which I've studied for so long, is that you just don't do one of them. You do, uh, you learn a genre, you learn a form, um, and, and from that uh, experience, um, this is where the dirty part is. I, are there any children here? <laughs> Nasty down here. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really not, to reassure you. I don't think there are any children. It's Sean Brennan. There's a very strict uh, procedure about no children allowed in the department. Uh, so if there are any children here, they've probably gotten uh, already security tested about to make sure that they can stand these kinds of maneuvers. There you go. That wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> who's playing the, the, the gander, the musical instrument. Um, in uh, Java, I'd be performing, where I perform often, we have a, a full gamelan ensemble, and Pete directs a number of gamelan ensembles across uh, the, the UK. This is, this is one, one instrument from a gamelan, um, which is particularly associated with why I'm, um, as we'll hear tonight, from turned on. <laughs> That's often the case of these kinds of performances. Lang lang at dining kang oh I'm so poor so poor, he can Yang kan wo chano ko Gurnaro do
genting tan ana pegot, rob tan ana surud. Genting means a fence, tan ana pegot means without a break in its links, rob tan ana surud means roughly a flood that never evaporates. That's a phrase from the Wayan Kulit, uh, the Javanese shadow puppet theater, which is filled with these kinds of stock phrases. It's a phrase which describes something which goes on and on and on and on and on, something which traditional theaters like this tend to do. Um, there's a philosopher once said that we're born into a, a conversation which starts before we're born and then keeps on going on until after we're dead. And that's very much like any of these theaters from Asia, which I've studied uh, for many, many years. Uh, the theater didn't originate with me. These puppets were born uh, with me. And they'll be around for many years afterwards. Same for the Gander, beautifully played by Mr. Pete Smith here, uh, which is an ancient instrument. And Pete is playing patterns which have been played forever. The patterns are, this music of gamelan is circular. One enters at a certain moment and you go around the circle. You're playing variations on a theme. The, the patterns are, are formulaic. The, 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 the circular formation is known. And that's kind of what life is about, for me anyways. It's about uh, entering into a tradition and contributing something, saying your say, um, and moving on eventually, leaving, dying. Uh, that's part of that as well. And hopefully, uh, as they say in Javanese, uh, uh, a, a, a tiger won't uh, leave behind its spots, but a man hopefully will leave behind their good name. But this is a problem for me here because I've been asked by Professor Katie Normington, vice principal, uh, to give an inaugural, to inaugurate something, which in my mind at least suggests saying something new. It means initiating something. It means uh, embarking on a new endeavor. And unlike some colleagues in some other departments, perhaps in this uh, institute or certainly in others, uh, this idea of the project, which begins at a certain part of time and ends at another time, doesn't sit well with me. I don't believe in inaugurations. I believe in contributions. I believe in going on with something. And so for that reason, if none other, I've called some of my friends here, not only Mr. Pete Smith here on the Gamelan, but you also out in the audience, try to think about how to do this, how to inaugurate without uh, fetishizing novelty and the puppets as much as this dialogue our fireside chat might say something which will be of interest to us hopefully as a group <laughs> So in the solo show I did before, Dong in Search of Wayang, there was no gamelan with us. It's just a beautiful thing to celebrate, to have this music. And that does mean that there are some dead spots dramaturgically, uh, but hopefully it will make up for the oral pleasures we get from the, the, the music. Kandabuana. Oh, here you are, you're going off talking to yourself again. Well, actually, Smar, I wasn't talking to myself. You might have noticed that we have a whole audience out there. Oh, yes, like Sela Brakiti. Sela means ants. Oh, no, Sela means stone. Smart. Oh, yes, I forgot. It's my old age, you see. Sela means stone. Brakiti means smut. That's ant. We're in, we're in England. We're speaking in English. Smart. Oh, oh, you have to forgive me, Kandabuana, Kandabuana. And I have to explain also to the audience, Mar, about who Kanda Buana is. Oh, this audience doesn't know your CV. Weren't they introduced by Professor Katie Normington already? 
Uh, they, they were introduced Sumar, but they didn't get my full Javanese title. It's, the Javanese words are a little bit hard for English people to pronounce. I wrote them out phonetically on the, on the page, but it, I, I couldn't give too many of them. Oh, here you're going on again. I'll explain it. <laughs> Professor Katie Normington explained. Kanda means to tell stories. Buana means about the world. Oh, that's your Javanese title, the one which will give you when you got a knighthood in, in Chiribone. And that's what you're called in this story, Kanda Buana. So you don't forget it. Don't forget your roots. Well, thank you very much. And Kanda Buana kind of means like uh, international theater, doesn't it? Oh, in a word, yes. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad it fits my, my English title as well. Oh, that's very smart of you. Oh, why have you called me here? Well, Smart, I have this problem, and it's a real problem. You've been along with me and my side through all my travels. You've gone to these many, many countries, and so I thought I would bring you along here, along with my friend Pete Smith on the, on the Gundare, uh, to help me solve some of these problems which are facing me, um, because perhaps in talking them through, uh, we might arrive at some solution to how to inaugurate something which has no beginning and no end. Oh, you're going on talking to yourself. Whoa, you're a crazy man, aren't you? Well, I'm not exactly crazy. I mean, puppetry is the only formal, authorized form of culture where you can split yourself into different persona and dialogue among yourselves. So it's, if it's a craziness, it's a kind of a culturally endorsed craziness. Tomorrow. Oh, here you're going on and on and on. You want to know how to inaugurate something without a beginning oh, or an end? Oh, it's a kind of a paradox which you'd ask, not to me, Samar. Oh, I'm just uh, the ordinary human play. Oh, if you were my son, Chunkring, I would send you all the way up to Batara Guru, the heavenly teacher. Oh, my, my own brother. He would answer this question for you. Uh, I hadn't thought of that one. So you're saying that I shouldn't be talking to you, Samar. I should be going up there to the world of the gods. Whoa, that's right. Oh, you wasted my time already. Oh, all those people out there, they're expecting some sort of uh, lecture, and here you are, you're talking to a puppet. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what they were expecting. I did, I did actually include something in the, in the program. I, I, even, I even gave it a title. It was called Seductions of Traditions. I thought this was a really good title, Samar, because I had this book which I read when I was a teenager called Seductions of the Innocent. It was about comic books and how they turned you into communists and into pedophiles and such. And so I thought, I could use that kind of word, seduction. It was a very popular book for a while, and it was kind of a popular academic bestseller. I thought if I had seduction in the title, that would be really kind of cool. Oh, you're, you're pulling the wool over these people's eyes. Yeah, well, that's kind of what puppeteers do, Samar. You know, uh, we're not really talking. We're kind of directing the attention of the audience and to, uh, this, to this kind of constructed persona here. And, and so it is, uh, puppetry is very much like the art of deception, like the art of the magician even. It's a sleight of hand. Oh, you're going on and on and on. Oh, those people surely don't want to hear about you. Oh, I've, I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. For those of you who are concerned about lack of subtitles, these are old Javanese songs. People in Java wouldn't understand them either. They're so called mood songs. So don't worry about the language, it'll come to you. Takka narada. 
Kadosh Pundi Adi Guru. Kakak Narada, please use the international language of England. Oh, you mean I should speak in English? That is right, Kakang Narada. Very well, I will do so, for I am a god, just like you. I can speak many languages. Is that so, Narada? Yes, indeed, I spent three whole months studying Korean in Soaz summer school. And surely you can speak a lot of Korean. All I can say is Saranghae. That's not very good for three months of Korean. It's a very difficult language. And I'm not my age, that's what I used to be. Kakang Narad, surely then you're aware why I summoned you here today. My Lord Batara Guru, heavenly teacher, please instruct me. I have called you here today to discuss the cosmic disturbance which threatens the very substance of the universe. A cosmic disturbance, you say? Ladala. Narad, uh, surely you know the origin of that then. Well, my Lord Pataraguru, as you are the heavenly teacher, Lord Shiva to those South Asians among you, surely you understand the nature of this disturbance as the one who sits at the center of the cosmic axis and holds the four cardinal points in place. Very well, I have introspected in the matter, and it appears that there is some puppeteer professor dressed up in a strange garb, something like Javanese drag, <laughs> who's giving an inaugural lecture in such garb. Wadala! You don't say. How can a professor give a lecture in drag? What kind of thing is that? Surely he should be executed for his imp insolence. Kakang Narada, don't you know that Roberta Mock already gave a lecture in drag at the University of Plymouth? She dressed up as her alter ego, Bobby. Oh, is that so? What's more, at Queen Mary University of London, there's a professor named Lois Weaver who dressed up in her own alter ego called the country western singer Tammy Why Not. Oh, that's a crazy idea. Tammy, why not, you say? None other. Very well, then. Why is this such a disturbing event, then? Because Kakang Narada, this puppeteer professor, so-called, has brought along puppets to his inaugural lecture. Oh, puppets, you say? Those puppets are the dirt of the universe. They cause disruption. Punch and Judy, attacking all the pillars of society. Bread and puppet, causing disturbance on the streets. Ugh. Puppets, they should be gotten rid of. They should be burnt, one and all. Where is this crazy puppeteer professor? Kakangnarada, he is holding your gapit right now. Ladala! <laughs> Who are you? Please accept my humble Sumba of obeisance. Yes, get to the point. Who are you and what are you doing here? Well, if you'd like to know, my name is, um, uh, in the world of the Wayang, uh, people call me Kanda Buana. Kanda means stories, Buana means about the world, stories about the world, because that's kind of what I'm charged with doing, telling stories about the world and how things work. Very well, then what are you doing here? Well, I've been sent by Simar from the uh, Dunya Marcha Pada, as it's called, the, the earthly plane up to the world of the gods in order to figure out how to deal with this paradoxical state which I'm in, which is inaugurating something uh, which has, in my estimation at least, no, no beginning, no proper inauguration. How, how does one go about doing this? Ladala, you're asking me this question? Well, I was directed here by Samar. He said I was kind of like his son, Chunk. Maybe it's because of my long nose and my little bit of my belly here and my, in my height. I hadn't really thought about that there's some kind of family. Right? Chunkring is the equivalent of Petrok in, in, in Solo. It's kind of the, the tall one among the Punakawa and the, the clown figures. Who are you talking to? Well, I'm talking outside of the world of the Wild. This is our Wild world here. But I've got two other worlds going on here as well. I've got my Gunder world, the world of the musicians, our stage world. And I've got this world of the audience where you're out there too. 
La Dalla, you've got a lot of worlds going on, don't you? Well, a lot of us do these days. It's called multitasking. You shouldn't be talking about me with me with these, these things, nor with Batata Guru. Well, who should I be talking to then? None other than Dewa Kamanusan. Ah, uh, Kresna, you mean. Krishna to the South Asians, they call it. This is, this is a, a, an ancient art form. It predates the arrival of Islam in Indonesia. So there's, there, a lot of the stories are of Hindu basis. There you go again, talking to somebody off screen. Well, I, I do have to give the occasional footnote. I am, I am a professor, after all, so we need our scholarly apparatus, footnotes, appendices, and the like. Go and talk to Cresta, then. Anjraingkang puspitaram ka sering samiro no omrik om sekar kahandung ko ngas kondo. Cresta, my old friend and companion. Candebuana, I've heard tell that you are in the process of giving an inaugural lecture. That's exactly what I'm doing here in the world of the gods. In theater, actually, we talk about the gods being up at the top, all the way up there with the lighting booth. That's the, the gods. But in, in Wyong, the world of the gods is, it does refer to gods. Candebuana, what exactly is your dilemma? Well, Kresna, you see, I've been kind of thrown into the situation of inaugurating my professorship as, as a, here at Royal Holloway. Surely you were appointed professor in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's true. My, point, my formal appointment did come in 2011, but it's been four years. What have you been doing in these four years? Well, it's been a busy four years. I've been on sabbatical twice. Uh, let's see, I got divorced, uh, got remarried, uh, I got struck down with uh, sweet syndrome, um, let's see, uh, written a book, Kandibuana, four years. Yeah, well, that's how academia works, I'm afraid, sometimes. It's like a time warp. You put in an invoice through Agresso, and uh, three, four, five months later, sometimes a year, two years, something comes back, and you find out you filled in the wrong form. Exactly what is your problem? You've been asked to do an inaugural. Surely you have enough to say. Your name is, after all, Kandabuana. You can tell stories about the whole world. Yeah, I can tell stories about the whole world. I can talk the whole night through, in fact. As Pete Smith will testify, uh, we've, had, we've done a whole night Wyong before. We did a Wyong together at the British Museum, one, the British Library, 12 hours back to back. So talking is not, a, not, a, not an issue for me. Then what is your issue? Well, it's this, this problem of inauguration. See, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm in, in this, this traditional mode. For my whole life, I've been interested in these old traditions and thinking about how they're modernized, how they're hybridized. And this idea of inaugurating something doesn't sit very well with me. I know in universities, people have to have unique selling points. And that, that, that's what my, my, one of my former colleagues, Edith Hall, used to talk about us to us. She was a research professor. She said, you have to have your USP, she would tell us, in our research and our teaching, et cetera. But, but uh, this, this idea doesn't rub well with me. I would rather say I'd like to have a con contribution to a form, a dialogue, a, a department, a, a college, a university. In that case, I think you're unclear about the meaning of this term, inauguration. Well, I hadn't really thought about it very, very deeply, in fact. Um, yeah, inauguration. This comes from the Latin word augurare. Augurare. You mean like an augury? Exactly. Haven't you studied your Cicero recently? You mean Cicero. Cicero, Cicero. Cicero, Cicero. I, I, I've done that one, the tomato tomato routine. Yeah, I, I, know, I know that one. Kikero, in his book on divination, lays it all out. Auguries, 
of the ancient world, not only the Roman world, but the Etruscan world as well. You have to look at flocks of birds going through the sky. They go east or to west or west to east. You will know if it's a good day to inaugurate an enterprise such as appointing a Roman senator. Well, it's kind of like, it's almost like winter time right now. We don't have a lot of flocks of birds going by. In that case, you could do as the Romans do as well. And how would they inaugurate something? Well, they would cast out a little piece of bread and they'd put a chicken in a cage. And if the chicken came out and devoured the bread very quickly, leaving a little morsel behind, that was a good augury. And if not, if it ran away, if it didn't eat the bread, that was a bad augury. And you shouldn't do what you plan to do. So you're saying to me that actually all this inauguration stuff is based on a tradition then. Is that, is that, is that the point? Exactly. And it's about birds and morsels of bread. OK. <laughs> Why do we do this at a university? Ask the vice principal. The vice principal for staffing. She's in the audience. She'll tell you all about that. OK. Well, maybe we could do that after the show, Cressna. It's not, I didn't, what, didn't advertise this as an audience participation show. And so even though the vice principal happens to be a theater person and a dance person as well, I don't know if she'd feel very happy about answering questions. And uh, we were kind of limited in our time as well. You know, in Wyong and in Java would be around eight hours of, of performance. But I've been told by the security people in the parking lot that we all have to be out by 23.59 at the absolute latest, or your cars get turned into pumpkins. Candebuana, have I solved your problem? Well, I, no, not exactly. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of dealing with this. Have you forgotten then the Hebrew aphorism? Um, which one are you referring to? Ein kol chadash tachat Hashemesh. The words of the preacher. Yes, there's there's nothing entirely new under the sun. Yeah, I understood these words. Kol can have two meanings. Yeah, it can mean nothing, or it can mean like like entirely new. So, what do you what? Ein kol chadash tachat Hashemesh. That means in Hebrew. There is nothing new under the sun, or there is nothing entirely new under the sun. It depends on your translation. So you're saying I can do something new and claim that it's, or the other way around, I can do something old and then I can claim it's new? That would be like, like plagiarism, right? Not at all. Well, tell, me, tell me what the difference is, because I have trouble explaining this sometimes to my first year students. We have these study tutorials. <laughs> Uh, where we have to explain what plagiarism is, that you know, I'm using somebody else's idea constitutes as plagiarism. Th that's, that's a hard one, because well, like all our ideas for so are somewhere. I mean, Bakhtin surely told us this, that everything is double-voiced in language. Do I have to put quotation marks around everything? Kanda buana. It is not about saying something which is borrowed. It is about stealing. Well, yeah, I, 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 you mean if I don't accredit the person who's taken? Exactly. Because you are not an artist, Kandabuana. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't imagine myself to be an artist in the same way that, say, uh, Picasso understood himself to be an artist. That he, and Picasso talked about that good artists steal. So I'm not exactly stealing the, the Picasso stuff. Kandabuana, you're going on and on and on and on. This dialogue has no end, surely. Well, it does have an end. Uh, the end does come eventually. I mean, everyone's end comes eventually. Kandabuana. This inauguration is one where you'll take your own approach to something which has been said before. That itself is an inauguration. OK, I, I'm, I'm beginning to understand the drift of this. So you're saying that, uh, like, like a Wyong performance, everyone can do the same lakon, the same story, but, but the, the, the way you do it could be different. Precisely, just as Pete Smith over there is playing the Gundare using his own patterns. Other people have used similar patterns, but not in exactly the same way that Pete Smith plays them. Okay, and this, this has all to do with traditions then. Precisely. Well, is there anything which isn't a tradition? No. Oh, it's a pretty empty signifier then. All traditions is, is a way of looking at the world. You get up in the morning, that's your tradition. You go to sleep at night, that's your tradition. Ah, 
okay. I'm, 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 this is helping a little bit because I can inaugurate. So inaugurating like could be like looking at something anew. Exactly. But not entirely. <laughs> now, now, now I'm confused. Exactly, but not entirely. In order to truly inaugurate, you have to bed it down. You mean I have to find some sort of substance for that, that th this discourse to reside in. Exactly, it's not enough for just talking. One has to actually do something in the end. And to do that, to do that, one must have a circle. One must have some people around one. Kandibuana, I suggest that you go in search of such a circle of intimates who can support you in this moment. Someone other than us puppets from Buffalo Hyde, something closer to your own plane. But Cresna, what am I going to do? Cresta, Cresta. That was my moment of acting. I'm not really an actor. You might have noticed that. But I had this big, this big, ah. That's what in Indonesia we call overacting. Overacting. It's a good Indonesian term. Overacting. Song soyo, talu araras abior kang lintap kumedap tis tis sonyo tengah wang. Umrang kananing puspito Asiring samirono omrik Sangdwi jororong rengeng Liswaraning madu brang to Manung Sung sarining kembang. Sekararum. <laughs> wow, my daughter. Wow. It is so good to see you, my daughter. Now that you've turned 17, going on 18. Oh, I very rarely see you anymore. <laughs> Not that I'm blaming you. I understand a 17-year-old these days has a very busy social life. Wow, oh, with all the texting you do. Wow, oh, with all the Facebooking you do. Wow, oh, with all the social meetings you have. Oh, it's a wonder I see you at all these days, my daughter. Do, Father, please accept my humble sumbav obeisance, which I offer you with both hands. Oh, and daughter, please accept my blessings as well. Father, the reason why I'm here is I've had a most disturbing dream. Wow, a dream, you say? Wow, daughter. Don't you know that a dream is kumbanging wong turu? Kumbang means a flower, wong turu means someone asleep. It's the flower of sleep. You should forget about it. It's just some sort of day residue, Freud would say. Oh, Father, I cannot forget about it. I have tried everything. I have tried even giving sacrifices to the gods to try to forget about this dream, and it stays with me. It haunts me. Wow. Tell me what this dream is, and I can surely help you. Uh, don't you know that I have an A, B in psychology? <laughs> Father, don't brag, don't brag. It's bad manners to brag. Very well, daughter. Just tell me what the dream is. I dreamt about a very handsome man, a puppeteer who is also a professor. La da la. A puppeteer professor, you say? <laughs> daughter, put that dream out of your mind. That's what we call an oxymoron. Ha 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 ha. 
only some sort of moron would believe that there was someone who's a puppeteer and a professor. Ha 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 ha. Puppeteers are all about fooling people. They're about deceiving people, making them believe that pieces of wood and cloth and high can talk. And professors are about revealing the truth. Oh, how could someone be a puppeteer and a professor? Father, don't be behind the times. Don't be behind the times. You can be a professor of literature these days too, never having read a book, never having read a novel, just dealing with critical theory. You can be a professor of chemistry and never touched a single chemical in your whole life and just be concerned with computers. Surely you can be a professor and you can be a puppeteer. Wah! I learn something new every day, I guess. Wah! So who is this professor puppeteer? Oh, father, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that I want to marry him. I want to marry him. Daughter, put this out of your mind. You are the daughter of an ogre. That makes you an ogress. And ogres is fated shall marry ogresses, and ogresses shall marry ogres. Only men can wear, marry hu- women, and women can marry men. Oh, Father, you're so old fashioned. You're so old fashioned. Don't you know that men can marry men and women can marry women? That's perfectly okay. Surely an ogress can also marry a human being. Don't be sexist. Don't be homophobic. Don't be ogrephobic. <laughs> oh, I'm learning something more and more every day. All right, then. Father, if you don't introduce me to this puppeteer professor, I will show you Sudu Salira. Wah! You're going to kill yourself. Wah, don't do that, daughter. That's a big sin. Father, if you don't do... Oh, shh, shh, shh. Very well, I will use my magical powers and bring this puppeteer professor right before us. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's very close to you, daughter. Where is he? Where is he? I don't see him anywhere, father. Where is he? Where is he? He's holding you already. A doobiag, a doobiag. I don't really don't know how that one looks, actually. I haven't. I can't actually see what I'm doing. This is the problem with theater. You see me a lot better than I see myself. I can imagine that it looks okay out there. This, the sound effects certainly are okay. A doobie, uh, handsome man, handsome man, handsome man. Well, I'm not that handsome. I think once would be okay. In the world of Wyong, this character does tend to repeat their words. It's a little bit uh, of a verbal affection. In Java, I think people think this is a little bit cute, maybe. Oh, handsome man, please tell me what your name is. Well, in the world of Wyong, I'm called Kanda Buana. Kanda Buana, you say, it's a very good name, it's a very good name. Your bedside talk will surely never run out. Well, hold on a second. Uh, I was overhearing a little bit what you were saying before, um, but are you sure you're with the right person? Kanda Buana, I'm in love with a puppeteer professor. You're a puppeteer, aren't you? Yeah, well, I do do some puppetry on the side. And you're a professor as well. Yeah, that's true too. Kanda Buana, I'll have you as my husband. I'll have you as my husband. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm already, I'm, I'm already spoken for. Actually, I have a very beautiful wife who I'm very, very devoted to. I have a, even a child on the way and coming in January. I don't mind. I can be your second wife. That's okay. That's okay. Well, <laughs> I, that's okay maybe in Java. Polygamy is legal in Java. But from where I'm com- coming, that's strictly verboted. Kanda Buana, Kanda Buana, why don't you just marry me then? I can teach you Javanese. I've been there. I've done that. I can teach you Korean. That You can teach me Korean? How can you teach me Korean? I worked in Korea as a takeaway for three years. My Korean is pretty good. Well, even if you could teach me Korean, I'm, I'm committed to this idea of life and work separation. Very important principle. There was this puppeteer once named Richard Teschner in, in Austria, I, as the puppeteer, I've studied his work. He made these kind of fetishistic puppets, actually, uh, bi- biologically, anatomically correct puppets. 
Uh, and he would even make these erotic postcards of his puppets. He believed that he was, if he was too far away from the puppets, they would get unhappy. Certainly, he would get very unhappy. and had this very strange relationship which went out throughout his whole life. The theater's still there in Austria if anyone wants. To, well, I don't know how, people, how many other people are interested in erotic photographs of puppets other than me. Kanda Buana, Kanda Buana. Have you made up your mind yet? Have you made up? Well, my answer really is, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of spoken for. I mean, it's no disrespect to you. You are a very, very beautiful puppet. Even Pete Smith earlier said, confident in how beautiful you are. You're from Cherubim, but he reminded you, uh, Pete, of, of the beautiful puppets of Joe Jakarta. Um, and so, well, uh, there's no disputing how lovely a puppet you are. I'm afraid I'm, I'm kind of stuck in the world of human beings, and actually I'm enjoying it. I don't want, I, want, I believe in, in well, I, 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 I perform Wayang, I write about Wayang, I study Wayang, I see a lot of Wayang. I, I have to actually maintain some separation for, the, for this, for it to be kind of an art form. I mean, Art is about taking things out of everyday life and enjoying them and looking at them through the lens of art. If I was actually to sleep with you, to marry, I mean, don't get me wrong, I know, I know, I know there are people who marry the Eiffel Tower, and I, maybe that's even increasing these days, what went on in Paris and everything, but I have this, this kind of this issue about, about really to, to marry. Uh, do, father, 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 this man is going on and on and on. I didn't want a chatterbox. I wanted a puppeteer professor, someone with more interesting dialogue. Father, oh, don't worry, there are other puppeteer professors out there. I'll introduce you to John Bell in the University of Connecticut. <laughs> Samar, Samar, and Samar. I've got three Samars here. Those of you who have been, not have been really paying attention will notice that my discard pile here has gotten a lot bigger. Um, I could tighten it up a little bit. And in Java, when I was doing a full night wayang, you'd see a, an assistant who would be doing that kind of work. So, and th this pile here has gotten a lot smaller. So that means that we're kind of on the way towards moving towards a conclusion here. But Samar times three, what should I call you? Oh, no problem. You can call me Samar. Hey, you can call me Samar as well. Well, you already know my name is Samar. <laughs> three Samars. Okay, okay so uh, I'll call you Samar A, Samar B, Samar C, Samar 1, Samar 2, Samar 3. Oh, just call me Samar. Oh, okay. Well, what, do, what, are we, what are we doing here? Oh, don't you know? You've been thrown out of the world of the gods. You've been thrown out of the world of the demons. You're back here with Samar again. Yeah, I, I did notice that we've kind of gone around the circle a little bit, except now that there's not one Samar, there, there are three of you. Three here, three. Uh, what, 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 are, what, what, are, what are you trying to say by, 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 by multiplying? Oh, just read the signs, just read the signs. Hey, dialogue, you should be capable of telling What's going on in your own story, Shirley? All you have to do is think about it. Yeah, I am thinking. The, the implications I don't like very much. You're starting to say that I'm kind of surrounded by the world of clowns. I'm not some sort of god or some sort of demigod like Krishna or even an ogre, but um, I'm kind of a clown figure, a disruptor, a, a transgressor. Oh, that's up to you to interpret, surely. Oh, uh, this is your ground, perhaps. Yeah, I, I, I do understand. You're very much of the earth. You have this rotund, earth-like form. And you're saying that by moving back here, oh, by moving back to us, among us, surely you can grant some perspective on what you're doing. Oh, that's always been our job, escorting the heroes even when they're crying, even when their stomachs are empty. Why, oh, that's exactly what we do. We bring perspective. Perspective, you mean. Why, oh, that's why I said perspective. Per, pers, perspective. 
Well, that's a matter of semantics. Yeah, okay. So I'm here with three samars. We've kind of triplicated the samar. Norm there, are, there are these stories occasionally where samar appears. There are two samars, but normally one, it's one samar. And then the other samar is like the imposter samar, and they kind of have a big fight, and the one samar turns into the baddie. But these, these, are, these are three real samars. But this is kind of our, our deconstructed wyang again. I, um, I've, my wife gets me to watch the, the cooking shows. We had to watch a, a show which was about a deconstructed a shepherd's pie the other, the other day on MasterChef, where there was a little bit of gravy on one on the little pitcher. There was some crust kind of floating around the dried up chicken. Jay Rayner didn't like it, by the way. But um, <coughs> this is kind of our deconstructed wire. We, we, kind of de we got two screens going on here in the back. We have one gundere. We have these kapra here, which normally would be hanging on a, uh, on a puppet box, a kotak. We've got a scattering wire. And here we've got three samars, not one. But it kind of reminds me also that, that these different samars, all of them are, are equally samar. Oh, of course we're equally samar. What do you think? We be fooling people? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that you are all equally smart. It's not that one is the false Samar or the real or one is the younger brother of Samar, one is the evil twin brother of Samar, like in the, the sitcoms. You, 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 you are all Samar. And maybe that's where I am. I, I'm one Dalang among the many Dalang, but that just as each of you has your own quirks and peculiarities, you've kind of shown me that I have my own peculiarities and quirks. Wah. You're getting the idea. Oh. Oh. I think he's really gotten the idea now. Oh. He's gotten the idea, except for this. <laughs> OK, so all the Samars have, have gone. Uh, this is my good to bogan, my banana log substitutes empty. And, and Samars left me with a fart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this in, in, in Java would be used to, to symbolize uh, Samar's magical fart. Um, you might notice it's the most abstract of the puppets around. It's just a, it's just a circle, really. Um, and it could be used for just about anything in Wag. It could be a pool. If you were to have a Wag who go into jump into the pool here with a little kind of jumping movement, um, you could use it as a weapon to hit some, another Wag puppet with. Um, I did one show, you might remember, Pete, at the British uh, Library, where this was Kumbhakarna's ear, this great ogre who gets decapitated and torn limb from limb in the Ramayana story, the cataclysmic battle which ends the Ramayana. This great ogre gets decapitated. And this lands among the monkey soldiers, and they have a debate about what it is, and it turns out to be Kumbhakarna's ear. So it's kind of like leaving me with nothing, I guess. But, it, you know, in the rehearsal, I start to look at this puppet, and I start to read it more closely, not symbolically, not, not actually, you know, as form, because circles and everything we've talked about already, but I actually start to see that there was some writing here, um, and, and I noticed that it said here, it, it'll be hard for you to read if I had a magnifying glass, you'd see it, but it says here, Nama, and then it has a colon here, Sri. You can, you can verify it for me. Can you say? Namasri. Namasri. See, it's verified. It must be true. Um, and it's like in a little child's handwriting. Nama means name, and colon means colon. And Sri is like the child's name. It's the kind of thing you would do like in a school textbook. Like you'd put your name in the top, or, or in a piece of pair, a piece of homework. You'd put your name up at the top. Um, and it kind of, kind of instantly, I knew what, what this was for, that this is, has other functions uh, other than um, other than uh, just in the world of the Wang, this is a prop which, uh, in a Wang performance, you'd have typically behind the Dalang, behind the puppeteer, would be sitting the Dalang's wife, um, who'd be uh, helping out, passing an occasional cup of tea, perhaps, scolding the musicians if they were away for too long or not, or falling asleep. And often you'd have the, the Dalang's daughter as well. And they would take this puppet out of the, the set and use it as I'm using it right now as a fan. It's not a bad fanning device, yeah? yeah it's, not, it's pretty good. And Java, of course, is a, is a tropical country. Um, you'd be wearing many layers of clothes uh, as a puppeteer, typically. And so, uh, and the, the doll's wife would want to use, have access to this. So it would be, the daughter probably just uh, absentmindedly used this as a writing pad and, and wrote down her name there, not to claim ownership of it, but just kind of a lata kind of thing, kind of thing you might do absentmindedly. Um, and 
it's been left with me, and it kind of has been left with all of us, that this puppet didn't belong to me originally. Most puppets are inherited and they're passed through the generations or purchased through one mechanism or, now, or other or traded. Um, yet the, the social marks of the past are there with them, the uses, the, the appropriations, uh, and the meanings stick with them. So the puppets themselves carry this meaning of the tradition. Um, and carry them to us today. Uh, so this has been our show. This has been Seductions of Traditions. Um, I don't know if anyone was seduced um, or felt uh, uh, connived, uh, but this is what, what we do in, in the Department of Drama and Theater. Uh, and I hope that you've, been, at least if nothing else, you've enjoyed the beautiful Gondare playing of uh, Pete Smith of Oxford. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to joining you outside for some uh, nibbles and some, some beverages. Uh, we'll close with Aya Ayakan. <laughs>
it was all about Matthew, and yet he was carrying on a discussion with others there and letting the audience almost become part of the village conversation. So finally, uh, Kandabuana, telling stories about the world. Can I say how grateful I am as chairman of the anglo indonesian Society that you're actually telling stories not about the home world, but about Indonesia. And Indonesia being the fourth most populous country in the world is probably the least known large country in Britain today. And to have brought a sense of the wonderful culture and inventiveness uh, that exists in Java and Indonesia to us all this evening is a great achievement, Matty, and I thank you for it. In 1817, there was a particular British connection with Java, although it just had been. Uh, during the Napoleonic Wars, the British briefly took over what was then the Dutch East Indies, uh, in particular Java, Sumatra, the Banda, the Sunda Islands. But a, at the end of it all, Sir Stamford Raffles, who was the Lieutenant Governor, wrote a great work which was called The History of Java. And it's about this fact. And it brought home for the first time to a British audience, to a British readership, that there was this great culture at the other end of the world. It wasn't an undiscovered land like Australia. Or, but here was this very populous, very rich country, uh, rich in terms of culture and traditions, uh, as well as uh, wonderfully diverse in itself. And he said this about, when he was describing Wayang performances in villages and so on, he said, the Dalangs who manage and conduct these amusements are treated with considerable respect. In many points, their office strongly resembles the ancient bars. And I hope you will all join with me this evening in treating Professor Matthew Gurney with considerable respect and thank him for his amusement. Uh, just a reminder, there are refreshments.